you know, especially in bigger organizations where there's so many people, there's people coming and leaving, you know, there's, there's few people and it depends on the organization if they stuck around for like 10, 20 years and people know them. Most of the time you're dealing with a lot of people you don't know that well. And then the aspect that matters is credibility, right? That you talk about quite a bit. And I, I just been in a situation literally last week on a project and it's a change transformation project. So everyone's new. I'm only getting to know everyone. And there was one, one meeting where someone went about in a certain way. And I had a check in with um, one of the leadership down. I said, Oh, what's going on there? Do you know what, you know, that person is doing? And, and he was like, Oh yeah, yeah. I know that person for plenty of years. Uh, you know, I trust that person. So that's all fine with me. You know, which is at the point where credibility is totally there and people get a lot of freedom and trust to do what they want. And I think therefore I'd like to, to ask, tell us a little bit about some of, or maybe the, 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 the initial probably credibility builders for people that get you there. Because the story you just told sounds similar to like, solve this problem first and after that, you actually kind of relax do more of what you think might be right or it would be supported. So tell us about cred credibility builders, please. Well, I think in building credibility and particularly building the credibility where people entrust big jobs to you and responsibility to you and give you room and latitude, it's about understanding the agenda. You know, in every organization, there's an agenda and it's rarely the stated agenda. And by agenda, I mean, here's what's important. And I think people who have credibility in organizations are people who come in and they figure out what's important. A little acronym I use is just like, what's a win? What's the win? What's important now? And it's rarely kind of what's published in the strategy document. It's like, what are people spending time on? What do people talk about? What do they seem to care about? And, and it's finding out what's important to somebody else and making it important to you. Um, you know, this is this is not in the book, but this just reminds me of a story. It was uh, a professor of mine told, and um, he had a young son. He was a teenager, and they spent the summer traveling around the United States, going to every major ballpark, baseball park. And at the end of the summer, one of his friends, this is Jay Bonner Ritchie, one of his friends said, "Oh, Bonner, I didn't know you liked baseball that much." And Bonner, who's very academic, you know, was like marched with Martin Luther King. You know, he's like, "Oh." I don't, but, but I love my son that much. And it just has always stuck with me about, you know what, find out what's important to the people around you and then make it important to you. And it really changes your relationship. You build a lot of credibility doing that. And um, one of the things that I did going in um, to the research, of this book is probably my favorite part of the research was um, we asked 170 managers to tell us about, you know, their impact players compared to, you know, strong, steady contributors. Essentially what we're looking at is what do smart, capable, hardworking people who are doing a good job do versus what do smart, capable, hardworking people who are making a huge impact do? And like, what are the subtle differences in there? And in that process, um, I asked 170 managers, what do employees do that you most love you know, and they're, they're telling me, oh, here's what I love. And then what do people do that you most hate? What makes your job as a leader joyous and what makes your job miserable? And I'm telling you, this list is kind of gold. <laughs> it's, so let me tell you a few things on the top of the list. Um, things that, we'll start with things that bosses hate. Uh, giving them problems without solutions. Number one, uh, waiting for them to tell you what to do. Like, hey, I'd love to, I'm happy to be helpful. Just like, let me know what you need. Um, make them chase you down and remind you. Uh, don't worry about the big picture. Just like do your thing, do your piece. Um, and number five on that list, I've got a list of about 15 here, is ask them about your next promotion or raise. You know, and it's not because people don't want to see you being successful. It's like most of the time bosses don't have the authority to be to be doing that. Here's what they love. Now, of course, it built into this idea is when you do these kind of things that your leaders hate, your credibility is just going down, like your currency in the organization is going down. down. When you figure out what's important 
to the leadership of the organization or to your clients or your community. And then you find out what people love about being a leader and do those kinds of things like your ability to make change and do meaningful work goes up. Okay, on the top of the love list, um, do things without being asked, um, anticipate problems and have a plan, help your teammates, um, like make work easy for them, do a little extra and be curious and ask good questions. Like that's what managers love the most. And you know, when you look at that, in essence, managing, I want people who self-manage. I don't want to have to tell people what to do and then follow up to see if they've gotten it done. I don't want people like, I don't want to be the problem solver. I don't even want to be the director of the group. I think most leaders want to be facilitators of that process. And they actually love it when people say, you know what, I, I saw this problem on the horizon and I just taken the liberty of fixing it before it became a big issue. You know what? Nobody asked me to do this, but it looks like someone needs to do this. So I, I just took charge and did it. Or would it be okay if I took charge and did it? This is what, what leaders love. 